if you love using your crock pot, but you don't love all the cream ofs that are in a lot of those crock pot recipes, this is for you. In fact, almost every crock pot video that I have ever done is for you because it is so rare that we use any type of cream of here in our house. And if I do use it, I usually will make it. I have that recipe on my website, feedingthebirds.com. I will also have it linked in the description box. Today we are making coca men. I think that's how you say it. We're gonna be making this in the crock pot because it really makes it easy. But honestly, you can make this in the crock pot, on the stove top. Um, in your instant pot, whatever way you are most comfortable making it. It is currently 1120. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on this so that it can be in there for the rest of the day. This is one of those that truthfully, if you start it at, you know, six, seven, eight a.m., it's probably even better to cook it on low all day long. At this rate, we're probably going to be cooking it on high so that we can eat dinner around 545 or six. For our recipe today, we are using bone in and skin on chicken thighs. Now, I am going to sear these first before we put them in the crock pot. I just think that that adds such good flavor if you do that first. And then while these are searing, we will uh, go ahead and prep all of our vegetables. I actually already have some oil heating over on my stovetop so that it's gonna be ready to go. Let's add some salt to each one of these. Now, I'm gonna season them on this side, and then when I put them in the pan, I'll season the other side. So making sure we've got really good flavor here. This is uh, one of our opportunities to really make sure this is flavored well. I personally like to add a little bit of thyme, and we'll need to add again. I like to add garlic powder. Onion powder. And I love adding paprika. I love the flavor and the smokiness of it, but truthfully, I love that it adds color when you saute or when you um, sear these off. Okay, so paprika. All right, so we'll take these over, lay them in our, goodness, where are my words today? We'll, lay them, we'll put them in the pan, let them sear. I'm gonna go ahead and season the other side once we get them in there. Now that we've got these in here, let's go ahead and season up the other side. You can smell all those spices and man, it's already smelling so good. Now, while those are working, I'm gonna get started on our vegetables. So we are using mushrooms. Cremini is the best to use. They're a little bit more pricey, but I do feel like it's worth it. We're only gonna cut these in half, but I am gonna give them a quick wash. Oh man, look at that color. That is what you want, y'all. This is gonna be so good. Okay, let's just let it sear on that side while we work with our carrots. I'm just cutting the carrots into like the same thing that you would do if you were doing a roast. That is my preference on this. So cutting them into, I don't know, two, three inch length pieces. And then some of them I'm gonna quarter depending on how thick they are. Some of them will just half. So they're not match sticks. They are just carrot sticks. We'll go with that. I used three. I would say use whatever amount you like. And I am aware. I should probably be using a different knife, but I just don't feel like washing another one. Now, whenever I open up a can of tomato paste, I usually freeze the remaining amount into one tablespoon portions so that we can have it because you know, you almost never use an entire thing of tomato paste. So we need two tablespoons of tomato paste here in the crock pot, about four cloves of garlic, now this does call for a pretty decent amount of time, but fortunately that's something we have on the garden. I'm gonna take about two tablespoons or so of the leaves and add them into the crock pot. And then we'll add a couple of sprigs in as well. Let's add in those carrots that we've chopped. 
and the mushrooms. Mashed potatoes are delicious with this. You can actually add in your potatoes here and let them cook in this broth, then pull them out and mash them. So they're gonna be cooked in that same great flavor. We're cooking this in the smaller crock pot tonight and I don't think potatoes and all those chicken breasts are gonna fit. So I'm gonna make the potatoes separately. Now this recipe calls for one and a half cups of dry red wine. So this is a Pinot Noir. I'm glad that this bottle doesn't require the uh, wine bottle opener because I'm not even sure we have one. One thing you can do if you have a little bit of extra time is take some of this and put it over on your stove, let it reduce. So you start with like three cups, but let it reduce down to about a cup and a half. And that's, that's another re really awesome way to do this and just add such a great richness. This all depends on the amount of time that you have. I'm adding about one cup of bone broth. You can use chicken broth, chicken stock, whatever your preference is, but just around a cup. Okay, I actually did get some new bay leaves. So now we have whole bay leaves. I'm gonna add in, let's do three. We'll just kind of nestle them in there and we'll pick those out before we eat. Okay, now we take our chicken and we lay it on the top. I probably should have used my larger, oh my goodness, look how good this looks. Oh my goodness. I probably should have used my larger crock pot if I'm being honest, but it's okay. I'm gonna use it for a different recipe. We're setting these on the top. I don't think I mentioned it, but you can see chicken goes in skin side up. All right, this is going in my crock pot. We're probably gonna let this cook for at least four hours. I'll check it. If I need to crank it down to low, I'll do that, but I really think it's gonna be fine at four hours or so on high. It might even take up to five. So we'll see how this is. The one thing I wanna be careful of is that the, the carrots just don't turn to mush. But the fact that we seared the chicken will allow it to cook a little bit faster because we've already given it a head start. So. Put this in there and we're gonna come back and about 30 minutes before this recipe is done we're gonna take the lid off but continue to let it cook and it's gonna help that sauce to thicken up a little bit i was putting everything away <laughs> cleaning up and i just realized that i didn't add in the little pearl onions that we have for this so hang on let's fix this really quick i'm actually gonna pull the chicken out and just set it on this cutting board because i want the onions to go underneath it with all the other vegetables. We definitely don't need the whole bag, maybe a cup. You can add in however many you like. That's probably good. Now we'll add the chicken back in and let it cook. All right, I've pulled my chicken out and this step is not totally necessary. I know a lot of people don't do this, but I do think, again, it just adds a little bit of a richness. A tablespoon of melted, bu melted butter mixed with a tablespoon of flour. Then we pull out some of our liquid here and mix that together. And when we pour this back in, it's really just gonna help just add a little bit of thickness. It's not a lot because we're only doing one tablespoon, but it just, to me, I feel like it's so good when you serve it like this over mashed potatoes because it's almost like a gravy. Again, you can step this, you can skip this step and just serve it with this liquid here, completely fine. We do need to pull those bay leaves out. Okay, I'm gonna let the lid stay off and just continue to let that sauce thicken up for the next couple of minutes while my potatoes are cooking. Oh, yay, there's the bay leaf, found it. Another thing you can add in is bacon. So I'm just gonna crumble up some bacon. It's just gonna reheat in there. This one is already cooked. Now, if you do not have cooked bacon, at the very beginning of your recipe, when you are making your chicken, what I would suggest is to make your bacon first, then cook your chicken in some of that leftover bacon fat. That's gonna be really delicious. Friends, I thought that I was recording the taste test to this, and apparently I pressed record when I was done with it, so I did not get that on camera. However, this was really delicious. I mean, bold, bold flavors here. So easy to make it in the crock pot. Yes, you have a couple different steps that you need to do, but it's absolutely worth it to make this recipe. So good, so delicious. And I feel like if you're gonna make this, 
in the crock pot is probably the easiest of the methods just because you can walk away, but highly suggest trying this one. You guys know how much I love the product from Seed, the DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic. I have been taking this for a good long while now. It's, it's been close to a year and it is a product that I genuinely love, okay? Let me tell you, personal experience, we got so busy over the holidays, we were doing some traveling and stuff, and I know it comes with a travel vial, but I forgot to bring it. And let me tell you how different I felt over that holiday season when I was not taking it. My skin looked worse, I felt just like overall not quite as good, more bloated and things like that. I'm telling you, this product is so amazing. It is so good for gut health, cardiovascular health, your skin health overall. So here we are in the new year. I am back to taking this DSO-1 from Seed every single day because it is worth it. It makes me feel so much better. This is a broad spectrum, 24 strain pro and prebiotic. So that's why it's called a symbiotic because it's got both of them in there. You are going to love this. You're gonna love the way that it makes you feel. For me personally, like I said, my skin is wildly different when I'm taking this product. I can look in the mirror. I can see that my skin is so much more glowing. It's so much more clear. So if you're like me and you had a holiday full of indulgence and you ate all the things and did all the things and did not stick to your current routine and you're ready to get back on track, this is the product I'm telling you. You guys, I, like, I really, really do love this product. I can't say enough good things about it. You guys have heard me talk about it before, how the gut health absolutely affects the overall health, the skin health, and all the things. One thing that I love about this is the first time that you order it, you're gonna get the glass refillable jar and a travel vial that you can take with you. These are so convenient. I love that you can just refill them so that you don't have a ton of waste. And then when you are ready for your next month, you're gonna get this right here in the mail and that is your refill. You just open it up and add it to the jar that you already have available. You can click the link in my description box and use the code BIRDS25. You're gonna get 25% off your first month's supply of Seeds DSO-1 Symbiotic and you're gonna get free shipping. A breakfast frittata is fun and convenient. It is also awesome when you can make it in the crock pot. I love that with this, you can add all the flavors you love and leave out things you don't. So the first thing that we're gonna do is chop up the vegetables that we prefer to go in our frittata. Now, a lot of times, you know what I do? We do a fridge clean out. That's what goes in our frittata. Whatever needs to be used out of the refrigerator goes into a breakfast frittata for the next morning. So don't feel like you have to go to the grocery store and buy a bunch of stuff for this. We like mushrooms, so I'm gonna add in some mushrooms. I actually think that's probably enough for the amount that I'm making. Also, we're making this kind of like a Mediterranean style. I'm adding in, maybe. I'm gonna add in some roasted red pepper. I think probably one of these will be enough. We're just gonna kinda chop it up a bit. You can just slice it. You can buy them sliced as well. I actually thought that's what I got, but no big deal. We'll just cut it up a little bit. I like to add some Kalamata olives, just a preference. Obviously, do not feel like you have to. Oh, what are these? With the oregano, that's perfect. Okay, so I did not know that I got these. These are Kalamata olives with a touch of olive oil and oregano. Didn't know that's what I got. Man, we are, we are full of surprises in this today. Um, but that's perfect because I was gonna add oregano to this recipe anyway. So, you know what, let's just, let's just do a rough chop. These don't need to look pretty. Another great option for this would be red onion. I've got my crock pot insert. You want to spray your insert really well, especially if your crock pot is about 30 years old like mine is. We've got some leftover sausage that we cook up for burritos and things like that throughout the week. So I'm gonna just add some of this to the bottom of the crock pot. You don't have to do this, you can make yours vegetarian, but we have it in there, so we might as well use it up. That's probably good, we've got a nice layer there. Okay, I pulled some oregano off of the garden and we're just gonna break this apart, put it in there. You could cut it up if you want to, but I'm not really that worried about it. You could add spinach, uh, kale, sprinkle around your uh, vegetables that we cut up. I do my best to evenly space just so that no matter where you cut it, once it's cooked, you're gonna get a bite of something. You're gonna get, you know, it's gonna be spread out. 
Now feta cheese would be really good in this, but we're actually gonna do a different cheese. Here in this bowl, we're gonna crack eight eggs. And now I'm using about a fourth cup of half and half. You can definitely just use uh, regular milk, whole milk, whatever kind of milk you usually use. I do wanna add in some salt. Even though Kalamata olives have kind of like a salty taste, that's gonna be helpful too. We like to add oregano because it just ties in perfectly with these flavors. Like I said, I was gonna add oregano anyway. A touch of garlic powder, maybe half teaspoon, and then a touch of onion powder. Now we're not using actual onion, so I feel like this one's almost necessary, about a teaspoon, uh, half teaspoon as well. All right, let's whisk all that together. Now we pour the egg mixture over the vegetables that we laid down in there. I don't wanna to pour too quickly or too aggressively because I don't really want stuff to move around. I'd like it to kind of stay where I put it. The last step is I'm gonna to top this with a little bit of garlic and herb goat cheese. You can use just regular goat cheese, but this, if you don't like goat cheese, I mean, I don't know, you're missing out. That's all I can say. We don't need this whole thing. We're just gonna crumble a little bit on the top. So if this is, what is this, four ounces? Maybe two ounces, Not maybe not even. Okay, so we don't even have to make it perfect. You're just kind of taking little bits, pinching pieces off and adding it to the top. Spreading around so that you make sure you get bites of goat cheese no matter which piece you cut. This is the night before, before we plan to make it. Uh, tomorrow morning. I'm just gonna put a lid on, put this in my refrigerator, and then in the morning we'll bake it. This will cook on low for about two and a half hours or so. You could probably cook it on high. It's safer in my opinion to cook on low because then you make sure the cook is gonna be really even and you don't get any burnt etches around the side. I'm so sorry I don't have a taste test for you guys on this breakfast frittata, but we have actually officially decided this is our favorite one. The arugula in this is a little pungent, so if you aren't a fan of that but you want a grain, I would suggest using something like kale or spinach instead. But man, with that goat cheese in here, the flavor of this is so phenomenal, and this was so easy to make and just have in the crock pot ready to go. One thing you may not be making in your crock pot that you probably should be are desserts because you can make these and you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to heat up your oven or maybe you're already making a bunch of stuff in your oven but you need dessert. Put it in the crock pot, let it sit there and don't even worry about it. We are gonna make a crock pot apple crisp. So delicious, perfect if you serve it with some ice cream, so good. I'm gonna be using eight apples, one, two, three, four, five. So we are gonna peel the apples, then we're gonna cut them into, we're gonna dice them. Okay, so I'm just gonna peel them and then set them to the side. My daughter is gonna be helping me with this recipe. So our my daughter is actually the baker in our house. I love to cook and I love the idea of just being able to throw things into a recipe, but obviously with baking, it's not quite like that. So she really enjoys the measuring process and all that. So usually when it calls for baking, I will ask for assistance. Now that we have these peeled, we're going to cut them and dice them up into pieces. So I usually will just cut the center out and cut around it. And then you just have the core that you discard. As we cut them, I'm just gonna place them into this bowl that we're gonna use for mixing in a minute. For the apples that we cut, we're gonna add two tablespoons of lemon juice and what was this? A teaspoon of vanilla extract. Okay, and then we toss the apples in that mixture. We are going to make the cornstarch mixture and topping. I have one third cup of sugar. We're gonna add in some nutmeg and some cinnamon and I've got about a half teaspoon of each of those. Okay, add that to my sugar and then add in a tablespoon of, this is tapioca powder, but you can use cornstarch. Okay, we'll mix all of that together. All right, so 
so that part is done. We can set that aside. In this bowl here, we're gonna mix together our topping. I've got a whole cup of oats, one whole cup of flour. I have a half cup of brown sugar and a half cup of regular white sugar. And we've got a half teaspoon of cinnamon, a fourth teaspoon of nutmeg, and a pinch of salt. We'll mix this together and then we are gonna add in butter. We need a half cup of butter or a full stick. Now you can cut your butter into chunks. I'm actually gonna grate my butter with my cheese grater and then that makes it really easy to incorporate. All right, let's grate the butter directly into that. So just put that bowl over here. All right, so we're just incorporating that butter in there. I'm using the, my fork to just mix it in. You can add nuts to this. We are not adding them, but feel free to do that. You just wanna work this butter in until you have coarse crumbs, which we're getting very close to that. Make sure that we don't have a lot of flour pieces. That's, you, you wanna make sure that you don't have a lot of dry flour, that it's least at least combined in with that butter, or some at the bottom. So make sure you really get in there. So it'll kind of stick together when you do this, and that's what you're looking for. Let's spray the crock pot liner. And at this point, we can dump in all the apples. Yeah. I'm gonna mix the apples with the cornstarch mixture that we made. Looks like we're nice and mixed here. We've got a good coating on the apples. Okay, now we're gonna take that topping and it's gonna go all over the apples, which we've got a good amount of topping here. This would probably be better in a little bit bigger of a crock pot because it would be um, a more even layer. Let's put this into the actual crock pot and we're gonna cook this on high for two hours. Then we're gonna take the lid off and cook for one more hour without the lid. You guys, I have to tell you something. I made this apple crisp for company coming over, okay? Because I wanted to have a dessert, but I didn't want to worry about it while they were here and have to take something out of the oven. This might possibly be the best apple crisp we've ever had. And my mom has been making apple crisp for years. I'm pretty sure my grandma made it before that. I've had it several different ways. The flavor of this one though is so, so good. We served ours with just a little bit of ice cream on the side. It is phenomenal. I thought there was gonna be too much crust, but I'm really a fan of the crust that goes on the top. It is so good. I, I can't say enough good things about it. I'm wondering now how it would be with a more sour apple, just for the sake of trying it, trying something different. But this topping recipe is amazing. I mean, it, it's really so good, and I cannot believe how easy it was to just have it in the crock pot for two hours, take that lid off, and let it cook for another hour without the lid on. The top got crispy because of taking the top off of the crock pot. It is, it's so good. It's so good. I love it. Our verse today comes from Titus 3.1. Remind the people to be subject to the rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good, to slander no one and be peaceable and considerate and always be gentle toward everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you need more inspiration, check out the video that I have listed above here. You've got awesome recipes in this video. We love these and you guys will too. I hope you're having a great week.